Anyway, skosh.com, pulp2020 is the code to save. Skosh is pleased and proud to bring you our next guest. This man's a national winner, a Supercross winner, a former factory rider. He was in Dallas. I can't believe he's on the show. Larry Ward, what's up, man? What's happening, Steve? How are you? I can't believe you came on the show. I, I honestly thought you'd just tell me to pound sand again, Larry. I just came to make some money. All my friends are uh, paying me for stupid stuff I say to you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> tell them this. Tell them that. Um, no, man, it's great to have you on. You So... You'll come on this show, but you will not do a long-form podcast despite the fans wanting to hear it. You are the last holdout, Larry, and I think you enjoy being the last holdout. So there's two. There's honestly two things with that. Okay. One, you have never officially invited me. You, you, you're, uh, and I don't even know where this came from. You know, from the the fans. I mean, you've never even asked me one time. Oh my God! <laughs> oh, holy. <laughs> And second, secondly, to be honest with you, I truly, and then I'll get serious after this, but I truly always thought every time I'd see you and you'd ask me, I thought it was a cooking show or a taste testing show. But <laughs> I, see you at Dallas, I see you at Dallas and you're like Slim Jim. And I'm like, oh, crap, maybe he lost his show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, maybe one day still. We'll see. Who knows? It'll come down the line. I mean, you rode for 40 teams, Larry, so you got a lot to talk about. I mean, you know, so. I'd love to. And honestly, you know, I, I did. Uh, I think I read on some of your comments today that I ghosted worse than James Stewart. And I'm not mad at anybody. I just I just moved on. You know, yeah, and yeah. It, it actually this weekend going to the race uh, was quite humbling. Made me feel um, oh, very good. appreciative. Yeah. Everyone was so, so, so cool. Guys, I've never met Chase Texan. Very, very uh, obviously educated, mature young man. He was super nice to me. I do have a connection with Patrick Connection. Uh, I'm sure some people are aware of it, but Ziggy yeah. Rick Zilfelder was actually my mechanic in 1989 at Factory Honda. So, yep. wow. so it's just, it's just a small, small world. There was not <laughs> one single semi that I walked by this weekend that, People weren't like, oh, my gosh, it's Larry Warden. Yeah. I just never – I never – so I am kind of a humble guy, and it's just not uh, – it, it just doesn't seem real that I had that big of an impact. Yeah, people – I, I had three or four people be like, dude, Big Bird's here. I'm like, I know. I saw him. Like, Big Bird's here. <laughs> you know, because, like, yeah, you, you, you've been away for a while. You, you know, you hung up the boots, and, and, uh, and yeah, you know, whatever. Life, life – you know, when you do it that long, sometimes you don't want to go keep going to races either. You know, there's a little bit of that too. It's like, man, I did that for 20 years. Right, exa exactly. Where well, I did it a lot longer than that. Yeah, I, yeah. I started riding at three, racing at six. Uh, shoot, I did Rio Bravo in '77 before Ponca City. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I was one thing I, I do want to get in. I was very blessed to get to race with, uh, you know, Ricky Johnson, Jeff Ward, a childhood hero, Johnny O'Mara, um, and then all through the the journey. Yeah era and uh you know the michael rocco damon bradshaw and then all the way up into t being teammates with ricky in 2000 and you hit Stu, uh, yeah you yeah, got a Stu. james stewart my fa i'm gonna i'm gonna brag but my favorite james stewart story of all time is you mentioned it earlier washuga low two first moto uh he, he said the old man got me <laughs> and, <laughs> and i am so proud of that now being almost you know 49 years old and, yeah uh, Made me feel good. I saw Big James, and, and I told him that story this weekend, but I will come back to reality. He did blow my goggles off and smoke me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it doesn't matter. Take it. Run with it, right? Um, yes, sir. Uh, it's funny, like, Larry, that, that I don't think we knew this at the time. Like, that 250F was such a great bike. Like, I remember people being like, hey, what's better, 125 two-stroke, 254 stroke Like, we're not sure. They're heavy. They're hard to start. How are they? And, like, some guys, like, Wyndham's one of them, you're one of them, Kelly Smith one of them. Like, some guys just really rode four strokes well. It, it was just, you yeah, know. They, yeah. I'll be honest. I sat on the couch in 2000 during – or, excuse me, 2001 during yeah. Supercross season and uh, did a couple off-road races. Um, and I got on one. I'm like, wow, this is this is pretty impressive. And uh, I believe the first moto at Glen Helen, I rode Outdoor Nationals. Uh, Kyle Lewis and Moto Triple X gave me a chance. And – there, my bike was competitive from the first get, from right off the start. Yeah. Uh, there was a couple. Now I'm not gonna lie. Grant Legs, Langston, uh, Hari Nolta, the KTM, and yep. Mike Brown, the Pro Circuit Kawasaki, and Travis's uh, 125. 
those three bikes, but the three most expensive Borderline Works factory 125s in the class. Yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly, w- would would get me on a long straightaway. Yep. But Washougal is greasy, slick. Um, Red Bud's deep and loamy. The thing, the thing had amazing torque. Uh, there was growing pain. So yeah. It was oh yeah. Hard in a championship <laughs> because. Yeah. I'd win one weekend and then break a valve and go over the bars the next week. And Washougal, I mean, uh, yeah, the week before that Washougal Moto win, uh, it locked up coming out of Screw You at, at uh, Unadilla. Yeah. And I didn't even know if I was going to race. And Yoshimir put it all back to stock with a uh, head job and a pipe because I guess there was a rev limiter for over revving, but when you'd shift down coming into a corner, uh, something to do with the rev limiter. But yeah. anyway, it was, it was an awesome bike. Um, when I left Kawasaki at the end of 2000, uh, like you said, I was suicide watch, career ender. Yeah. Um, and then that bike definitely yeah. revived me and got me, got me another national win and, um, you know, got me a couple more years down the road. How about a triple X that year? I was on the team working for Nick. Uh, your bars came off the, the clamps at, where was that? Uh, do you remember that? Um, it wasn't at a race. It was practicing. They actually came out off the clamps. Yeah. Yeah, they, they – well, oh, where was you that? Always, see, you always like to make fun of me about being the only – the worst rider you would never want to work for. <laughs> I have a feeling, and I'm going to make 200 bucks for this one. <laughs> I got a feeling – that your slippery, greasy hamburger fingers <laughs> have something to do with it. No, it wasn't me. That, I wasn't working on the bike. You wouldn't let me work on the bike, but maybe it was. <laughs> um, no, it's it's uh, it's great to have you here. Hey, so uh, and, it was, and it was cool to see people that yeah, people were stoked. Like Brayton was stoked to see you. Uh, a lot of guys that I saw uh, were there, and Wyndham was there. K Dub was there too. It was just uh, it was great to see. We he doesn't come around much either. So it was like between you and Kevin Wyndham, it was like we were seeing like Bigfoot. Bigfoot came out of the bushes. It was amazing. Um, well, I feel bad. I actually, um, you know, have gone to, I think I went, I've been to three other Supercrosses mm-hmm. since, uh, since I left in 2003, yeah. which is, it, it's amazing. I can't believe it, but uh, it, it, it was fun to see all those guys. Um, I got there pretty early Friday, yeah. so I could start going around and seeing everybody. And, and of course, I'm, I, I am, uh, I do have a new project that, yeah. that, uh, that, that I was promoting, Um but uh, I did not go see Brayton, and you just tell me that it just kind of broke my heart. But it was amazing how fast the weekend went, and, yeah. I, and I intentionally got there early Friday. Right. And everything was so cool. Somebody talked to. Um, I, I'll be honest with you. I saw Clark and Lois Jones. Right. Um, right. Who, who brought me back from the dead in ninety four, ninety five? Nolan Yamaha. We made we made a little noise. Um, second in the series. I, I mean, I know second. There's a lot of. Phenomenal. I think, but I'm pretty proud uh, of a privateer being second in the series and a uh, lot, lot of podiums. And I was really, really – I've seen Clark once or twice, but it was really nice to see Lois Jones. Yeah. So that, it, that uh, was cool. Listen, uh, Red Dog's done it, and a bunch of – Brayton's done it, and a lot of guys have gone and had two factory rides. But when your day, it didn't happen, and you did it. You got back on a factory ride after losing one. That did not happen back when you did it, uh, and that's pretty phenomenal because nowadays, no problem. Guys jump around. Brayton will go to MCR and then get, get back on factory Honda or whatever. Red Dog did it, like I said, LaRocco. But, man, it didn't happen when you got hired back after that Nolene year. Well, in the early 90s, man, I, I, I'll be honest, uh, it, it, things are a lot different now. <laughs> and you, you, I was pretty impressed with, you know, there's – one or two bikes in both classes that are maybe a little bit behind but across the board uh even into the second tier teams the equipment seemed pretty pretty dang good mm-hmm. and in the early early 90s i mean i'm not i'm not talking bad about anything I'm, I'm thankful what i have but i was not and never was the number one or two guy and so i had to make a living mm-hmm. and so i went with what I, where i could get the most money and I'm just being honest. Yeah. Suzuki was not the best in the early '90s, and uh, you know, then you get an injury and you lose confidence. But uh, you know that that Nolan Yamaha got me a lot of confidence back. And I'm telling you, we're all Mike Tony Alessi, your former guest, uh, yeah. earlier earlier guest, and I talked about this this weekend. When we're racing, we are little kids, and he called us delicate flowers. And I could be one shot spring weight. The difference between maybe not qualifying, yeah. which thankfully I never didn't do, but maybe not qualifying and being on the podium. Like we, we, we are that fragile. Yeah. And, uh, 
so it, it's cool that the sport has grown, that there's so many guys that have a chance. Um, and, yeah, it was great to get a fetch ride back and yeah. make a little bit of money. But dude, dude, second to McGrath, like, people – and, again, it's kind of lost in history, like – not a factory bike, just privateer. Clark Jones, no lean, Sizzler, and you're you're beating everybody but Jeremy. Pretty pretty damn impressive, I gotta say. Um, well, there's some, and there was some, there was some stuff on that bike that uh, probably wasn't even legal because it was so dangerous. <laughs> like we had like shopping cart rubber off shopping cart wheels for my bobbing device, like stuff that yeah, yeah. Clark was, you know, Clark was a little bit before right. his time, and uh, but it worked for us. But I, I want to say something about Jeremy just while I got the chance. Uh, because you no, know, Jeremy of course gets a lot of credit, but he's he's done and said some things. We were never super tight, right? But never, you you said something to Sexton about you know not having enemies, and Jeremy never had an enemy. Um, I always wanted to beat him, but if right. I did, it was like, oh my God, I beat Jeremy McGrath, and right. and, uh, and in the years past, last couple of years, I'll get a random text or. You know, he, he complimented me on your show before, and and the guy's a class act. I, I uh, yeah. he's very I'm- humble for as accomplished as, as what he is. How many times, too, have you heard us tell tell uh, Brayton he's the Larry <laughs> Ward, right? Like, everybody does it. Uh, Eric Pernard was here a month ago and brought it up again. Like, everyone says that, oh, Brayton, you're the Larry Ward now. So, <laughs> Yeah, that, and, and, and that is a, that's a, a fair comparison. Uh, he, he's, he's good in Europe. And, yep. uh, I, Mike Gosler tells the best stories about him and Lamson taking, like, a million dollars worth of parts and test stuff and fact a whole factory Honda bike <laughs> and I'd be walking through the airport with like bars a and a set of handlebars. <laughs> <laughs> and then on Monday morning they'd get their tails chewed for uh right. how is Larry Ward beating you guys? <laughs> He's got uh, bars. So. He's got bars <laughs> and, and a gra- set of graphics. <laughs> Right. Well, I had to take a sh- really the shortest silencer Mitch would make me so that right. I could just r- rev the uh, RM250 to the moon. Um, <laughs> hey, it's, uh, Triple Crowns, would you, first of all, Triple Crown format, what did you think watching it, and would you have liked to race this format? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I kind of knew that that was what the show was about a little bit, uh-huh. one of your main subjects. And as a fan in the stands this weekend, um, I'm just being honest, I – have been i think i have the second most main events in history between you know all racing yep. lights outdoor indoor and i knew what was going on but if we're trying to you know get new fans in to mm-hmm. really enjoy it yeah i don't this is just my opinion uh I, I didn't come on here to get political or get in trouble or nothing, no yeah in my opinion from the fan standpoint now they did do an extremely good job of putting the points up on the big screen. Yep. But I don't think every stadium has AT and T, the world's largest television. Yeah. So from a fan's uh, point of view, I don't really care for it because I like to, you know, you go to a show or to a movie, it, it builds up to a grand finale, mm-hmm. and uh, it was just. Yeah. I don't think the average spectator would be educated enough. Sure. Um, to, to, to understand it completely as a rider personally, as me, if I was still racing today, selfishly, I would love it because <laughs> I was a really good starter. Yeah. I could, I could, I always had speed to go that next level. But, uh, when you go to that next level, the last four or five laps are, are kind of hard to get through. Yeah. Yeah. So as a selfish rider, I, I would have liked it. Um, and for the guys now and for the mechanics who, I mean, let's be honest, if it wasn't for our mechanics, uh, yeah. during the day, you maybe don't appreciate it or don't realize it, but the mechanics are, 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 the, are what keeps us going out there. And it's, it's, it's pretty miserable, um, just from comments in the pits from the mechanics. It's, yeah, a, lot it's of tough. Work, yep. a lot of extra work, a lot of extra hassle, a lot of extra stress. Um, so I don't like it from that perspective. So that was about as politically correct right. answer as I could give, um, it's okay. I'm yep. I'm old school. I'm traditional. Mm-hmm. So for me, I, I like it better the old fashioned way. Just you know, build right. up slowly to one one big grand finale. I like I liked when I was wrenching and Tim Ferry was beating you. I like when that was happening. Um, that was always gotta, my favorite. Yeah, wait, you gotta quit. You gotta quit doing that because I lose a hundred dollars every time you say Tim Ferry. <laughs> hey, or so so <laughs> you gotta stop. Larry, one of Larry's. When I remember one of Larry's favorite things. So ninety nine. I'm working for Timmy at Nolene. And Larry, you ninety nine. You're on Suzuki. 
you beat Red Dog at Southwick. I don't remember what happened or whatever, but I guess did, was was Timmy a better sand rider than you? I don't or no, because you won Southwick before, but I don't know. Somehow, Larry, and I doubt you remember this, you put a big note on Timmy's rental car at the end of the day. We went to the rental car. You wrote a note. Sandmaster Larry Ward beats Tim Ferry today, <laughs> and it was underneath the windshield wiper. <laughs> Do you remember that? Well, I mean, honestly, how can you not like Tim Ferry? And his wife, Evie, is always sweet, and I just like making people laugh. Honestly. Yes, Even yes, we I were laughing. had a bad day. If, like, if, if you don't know me, uh, my sense of humor, you might think I'm kind of a butthole, but I really just <laughs> no. like to make – I like to watch people laugh. And uh, yeah. I don't think it was 99 because okay. uh, I'm pretty sure uh, we had – so that – no, yeah, 99 is the year that Albie won the championship. We had really good bikes, and uh, wow. uh, I, 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 believe, I believe both motos. I don't know if it was a ground issue on the frame, but I had electrical problems both motos. And uh, mm. so if I beat him, he got like 40 No, no, I, 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 don't, I don't remember. In some race, you put a note under his windshield, and we were laughing like – we're just like, but oh. that's funny. Yeah, no, it's great. It was awesome. It was, it was awesome. You beat him and you put a note on his windshield on his rental car. Like, suck it. I loved it. It was great. And trust me, Timmy got me back somewhere along the line. Yeah. Because yeah. he's a pretty funny guy, too. Uh, listen, Stonewood Ranch, I put something up. I told you after I took the photo of us at, uh, at Dallas, I would put something up on the uh, – on the Instagram, and like a lot of people were into it. A lot of people wanted to talk about it. Uh, this is something that you've been running uh, for a few years. You're the general manager or the president or whatever the hell you are there. Uh, talk about Stonewood Ranch a little bit. Tell our listeners about it. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, it's primarily started off as, as just a hunting ranch. Um, the, the owners are John and Melinda Fulkert in Michigan, and uh, they, they, John works his tail off and, uh, and decided he wanted a place for his kids to go get away, go dirt bike riding, go fishing, just you know, try to get away from the cell phones. And uh, th- then uh, I think he, his, Miss Melinda spent a little more money than what John wanted him to. Yeah. So they asked me you know, to come in here and try to sell some hunts and make a little money back, and uh, now we've built it over the last couple of years into an amazing high-end corporate retreat, and uh, it is pretty much Disneyland for grown men. Yeah, your photos looked great. Photos looked cool. It, it's it's. I kind of waited to to bring this to, uh, you know, to put my brand on the ranch until this point where it's up and running and mm-hmm. first class all the way, uh, from the food to the staff. Um, the place is amazing. I'm super proud of it. Uh, John and Melinda, kind of blindly uh except for the lodge uh have turned me loose on everything from the rifle range pistol bays shotgun area um the the motocross tracks uh they let us build a big new barn which i I put a little thing on our uh instagram tonight um and it's just amazing it's i see so much team building these corporations come Mm -hmm. in here we'll we'll put guys that maybe are having a little riff together and, and make them help each other in a shooting event and, uh, you know, by the end of the night, um, a couple beers, a, a wonderful dinner, and everybody's getting along. And so my idea, one of the reasons I went this weekend was there's there's no real, and this is a whole different story or different mm-hmm. night, but there's no real job placement after you're a, a motocross rider. Right. And I don't, I mean, may, there's a very few handful of guys that make enough money in this sport to retire and, and just, just you know, right. live like they want. Well, to. listen, so, Larry, nobody did a, a European supercrosses for 20 years and just banked that cash. So, you know. <laughs> well, you, you, but, but life, uh, life is expensive. Is very, life. life is very expensive. <laughs> um, you, you know, I have a beautiful wife, beautiful little daughter, um, and motorcycle money runs out. Even Ricky Johnson, who 26, yeah. 24, 26 supercross wins, I've read things about him running out of motorcycle money. Yeah. So we yeah. all got to do something different. And I'm finally really, really proud of this. Um, the place is amazing. Uh, it's it's great for, for many things. But my idea was to go to all the team managers and end of the year, whether it's a championship year um, or just a thank and that maybe appreciation for mm-hmm. sponsors or mechanics or riders, it's a place where they could come. We can lock the front gate. We can shoot, ride. Um, yeah. Just, just have a good time and uh, at a very high-end place with great food. And that was kind of my idea. Now, I'm hoping that eventually it turns into those team team managers. One mechanic comes here, then they spread the word. And then, you know, yeah, you never yeah, know. Yeah. Then maybe hopefully yeah. it goes corporate to their sponsor stuff. But my main idea was um, I know I walked away. I know I've gone ghostly and just left the sport. But I'm not mad at anybody. It's just I had to keep 
working and try to find something else. And yeah. now I'm finally really proud of what we've built here um, with John Lynn and myself. The Stonewood Ranch is amazing. And uh, I, I kind of wanted to share it with everybody. It's going to be good for me if I get the business from the teams. Mm-hmm. But I also really believe that once I get one team here, uh, all the rest will follow. Right. At Stonewood Ranch on Instagram. Go check it out, everybody. And, 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 and Pulp listeners, hit Larry up. And maybe if we get enough Pulp listeners there, You'll do a podcast with us. So we'll see. Uh, who knows? <laughs> uh, oh, you're funny. Oh, uh, yeah, so, exactly. And, and on 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 um, Facebook, it's the Stonewood Ranch. Okay. Com, All right. And and on uh, Instagram, it's just and, and I and Steve. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I've ne- we've never had a problem. We kind of have a little bit of the same sense of humor. Yeah. Um, no, we're. Funny. I know. I'm not in your top ten with rollerball and fairy. No, and no, you're not there. Yep. Nope. You're, you got a long Kelly Smiths in there. I worked right, for I right. worked for Kalos. So, I worked for Kalos. Like yeah, you you're you're. But you're, where I'm going with this is complimentary. Okay. You, I saw you this weekend. You actually showed interest in my project that a former motocross racer actually has you know done good, and bam, you put it on your Instagram, mm-hmm. which has led to uh, I think I'm up 300 followers oh, in nice. three days on Instagram, which is huge. Yeah. Um, which and and it's cool too. And and I don't mind. You know, I I would love. The coolest thing in the world would be to get people come here to come hunting and hang out. And eventually I hope I can do an experience. Like if I could ever get, uh, Rick, Rick, you know, RC or, or Kevin window yeah. and, and uh, you know, have, have, have five or six guys come here and shoot and ride. And, and how cool little, would that be? Little, yeah. How about uh, story time around like story that. time around the fire or something? How cool would that be? Yeah. That's, that, I, I think, it'd be, I think it'd be huge. And, and, yeah. uh, so, and, and, and this place is five star. I mean, Please, everybody, even if uh, you're, you're just bored, just check it out. And just the, the pictures don't do it justice. But it, it's, it's, it's fun. I've had a lot right. of fun. You, uh, when's the last time you rode? You ride much? You busted uh, out? I think uh, Thanksgiving Day, um, somebody, I think uh, John Folkert, the owner, or, or his son Parker, or uh, maybe it was uh, Morgan Luttrell, had a KTM 300, mm-hmm. which I, I'd never ridden one. I hear about it. And uh, I had on cowboy boots, and I threw on Morgan's helmet, which felt like a uh, five-gallon bucket that I cut eye holes in. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I did three or four laps. Uh, before that was Fourth of July. So yeah, yeah. Parker Parker Folker rides he, him and uh, some of his friends come here and ride. And, yeah, and yeah. Parker actually he didn't fare so well at Amateur Day, but uh, he actually rides really good. And so, uh, but cool. I still ride good enough to where. Uh, all I gotta do is go ride with him one day, and then he he'll empty garbage cans and wash my bike. <laughs> and he'll take care of me. Nice. <laughs> but he forgets. He forgets between Fourth of July and Thanksgiving. I, I so I have to ride about three times a year to remind him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just put him put him straight. Yeah, L- Larry, I got a question for you. Um, so you're obviously you sound like you're very passionate and and happy about what you're doing now. How long would you say it took you to transition from being a racer to life after racing? Yeah. I, that's a whole nother topic too. You know, there's a lot of guys, um, that have struggled with that transition. Yeah. Um, it, it's not easy. Thankfully for me, you know, of course I was no Ricky Carmichael or Ryan Dungey, um, or Ferry or, or, or Tim Ferry. <laughs> <laughs> how, how many, um, 450 supercrosses did he win again? Uh, he didn't win any Larry. Yeah. So shut the hell up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so it, it is tough, and, and, and I'm not even going to try to kid you. I even struggled. Yeah. I'm glad I wasn't a Ricky Carmichael. I can go to Outback, and I can go there 100 times and maybe only have one out of the 100 someone recognize me, mm-hmm. where he has a hard time going to Outback without being mobbed, and that, that would get old. Um, but I did accomplish enough for a very skinny little kid from Monroe, Washington, uh, to win supercrosses and nationals and, uh, and actually, you know, financially save, save a little bit of money. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can tell you this, if I could, if, if I could go in a time machine and go back and start all over and try to do it again, better, I, I would just stay, leave it how it was and, and, uh, say that was good enough. Yeah. So, um, well of said. course everybody has regrets and I would have done this different, but, right. uh, it's just, it's just not reality. This is not an easy sport. There's very few that make it. And, uh, so yeah, so I learned how to fly airplane. I sh- 
shot shotgun tournaments. The, the thing that saved me the most was um, racing remote control cars. Yeah, um, that's I heard you do that. Yeah. But then I met, you know, the love of my life. I met my wife, and I got married, and then now I have a five-year-old beautiful, beautiful baby girl, and uh, nothing, nothing uh, – <laughs> that's the best. Every, any, anybody that's a father knows that. I yeah. when I get down in the afternoon, I I think ah, I might go ride today, and I end up going and getting her, and we go fishing. Or, uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah, cool. and we better catch fish because she's like me. She gets pissed because she's competitive. <laughs> <laughs> she better catch a fish. But, oh man, uh, I, I, I'm and 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 this, you know, racing RC cars and stuff. That was fun, but yeah. coming here and get build this project, and now you know you work hard all week and clean it all up and then put on your nice clothes and entertain people it's, it's mm-hmm. uh, I, I, i'm very very thankful to answer your question that i did make it through that transition because i i keep reading and hearing these stories about people that haven't and uh yeah and it sucks it's it tough sucks. it is tough man uh, yeah I, I do i've done a lot of interviews with them you know and that's why one of the things like when i saw you in dallas like i know you know you didn't i know you didn't have the smoothest farewell you know you weren't that happy at times with with the way it went at the end and kind of that and i get it i understand it and if i can help you with this stonewood ranch and i'm so pumped that you were around and you're you're, i'm stoked that everybody was happy to see you you know so like it's cool because man you had a fantastic career an incredible career you know so uh by the way right when i put up that instagram you know who hit me up and my dm was uh that 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 asshole rv villapoto washington state's own uh (laughs) <laughs> he was all about it. He's like, yeah, he wants to. He wants to go there. He said, drink beer and shoot things. That's his exact. So I have an RV. I have an RV story, real quick. Yes, please uh, do. So, <laughs> I'm born and went to high school in Washington State, yep. and I've never been back to live. You know, of course, yeah. I've been back, but not not to live. Um, and so, I still do watch. Like this weekend, I went over and talked to Kevin Tapia. Yeah, um, he told I me still that. Watch. Uh, the Northwest guys, um, there's a, there's a, anyway, so when Josh Hill won Minneapolis in whatever year, yeah. um, oh, seven, I, I, I think, yeah. I, yeah, there, thank you. And I looked up his phone number, guys, phone number, gave him a call. He was so nice. So even this weekend, both Hill brothers were, were so, so cool. So nice. And, uh, and, uh, so of course, when Ryan Villapoto, his first Supercross win was in Seattle mm-hmm. as my, as my first Supercross yep. win was in Seattle, I, I gave him a call and, uh, uh, I was thanking him, you know, and, and he's kind of quiet. And I said, "Hey, man, it's pretty cool. There's nobody else in the world that from Seattle, from Washington, that except for me and you, that both got our Supercross wins in Seattle." And yeah. he's all like, uh, "So it, is this Jeff Ward?" <laughs> <laughs> what a, what a jerk to, off! So you were asking earlier, like Sexton, like, "Are you over it? Is it over the takeout?" You never get over it. I'm still hate Jeff Matasovich's guts from him taking me to yeah. the Seattle Supercross. You never really get over it, but uh, but that would be so awesome because this is one place, like I said, yeah. we could be some healing done. And right. Yeah, you, you and Villapoto can get together, right, and, and hash this and out. He, if he spends enough money and buys enough stuff, he can call me Jeff all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, hey, how many people – so when, when you meet a fan – I, I'm guessing, Larry, and correct me if I'm wrong. Like you won, you were the first guy to win on that on that 250F. You you won Seattle uh, in '90. You won Seattle again later on. You won a national in factory Honda. You've done all this Tampa, stuff. Tampa, 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 in the mud, Tampa but, in the mud. but everybody wants to talk to you about '90 Seattle, don't they? Is that your thing that that drives you crazy? Where they're like, dude, I remember you and Chicken brake checking and looking old. Like, is that's what people want to talk to you about, isn't it? Well, that, that's fine because that was an amazing race. I mean, we we all did some East Coast or yeah, some some opposite coast races a year before. Uh-huh. But that was a pretty gnarly year. You had Ricky Johnson, Jeff Stanton, mm-hmm. John Michelle Bale, Johnny O'Mara, Ricky Johnson yeah. in the main. But you also had Larry Ward, Damon Bradshaw, Jeff Matesovich, uh, Larocco, Drowski, and Larocco. Yep, five full blown first year guys. And Bradshaw comes out at 16 or 17 years old and wins the first two rounds. Yep. I win the fourth round. Uh, Chicken won Vegas that year. Um, it was a pretty awesome rookie class. Yep. And that race was awesome. I don't not. I still watch it. I, I, I've watched that race back more than probably any other race. <laughs> oh, really? And okay, cool. I don't cool. know how we were so much better than everybody else because we jacked around <laughs> so yeah, bad. Yeah. And, uh, and we were still a straightaway ahead of everybody. I know. And, uh, it's, yeah. just, it's just, it's amazing to me. Uh, so 
89, Matasevich was amazing on, a, on in the lights class. Yeah, he, as he Kalitowski, was. 125 was good. He was amazing. Second, first night, it was a t- doubleheader in Seattle. First night, he beat me, but not by much. Second night, I checked out, gone, had, I mean, a, a really, really big lead. Last lap, same as Johnny O'Meara the weekend before. Mm-hmm. Uh, titanium steering stem snaps, crash off the track, break my ankle, and uh, and so I was. No matter what, I tried. I was. My whole life's goal was to win Seattle uh, that next year, and then yep. and then to come back and you know I got a little pumped up in '99, um, and when him when him got by me, and I actually let him go by before I pumped up really, uh-huh. really bad. Yeah. And I followed him for about two laps and uh, found out where I was pumping up and hanging on for dear life. I switched over to his line and it, it went away and then he, he, he faded some and yeah. Uh, Got it again. Seattle wins in your hometown where you grew right. up as a little kid. I, I'm just going to be honest. I, it, it, it would be a very hard decision if I had to pick between those two wins or a championship. I, I, I believe I'd have to go with those hometown wins. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they were they were they was pretty special. So what about? So, and then I and also oh. I, I you know I got to thank Suzuki and Roger and Ian uh, and Albertine uh, because we did we did do a lot of work when uh, the Suzuki was pretty bad when when I got there at the beginning of '98. Jeremy left in '97. Everybody yep. knew they were pretty bad, and uh, Roger put his head down and uh, you know yeah. obviously we all know where he goes from there. But I was there in the beginning for that, so that was fun too. Yeah, uh, we got Ron on three. Ron, you got a Larry Ward story. What's uh, what's going on, Ron? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, 1990 Hangtown um, in the second moto. Larry and somebody just ate shit right before the finish line. Do you do you remember that, Larry? I don't. I don't. Was I? I, I my mullet probably got caught on a hay bale. Or something. <laughs> You know, um, that 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 finish, I got eleventh that moto, and that that result that day got me national number ninety nine for the next year. So I got to thank Larry. For so yeah, because you got those two spots, right, Larry exactly. and the other guy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've always I've always been pretty giving and nice guy, but that wasn't intentional. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, man. Thanks, that's Ron. All I had. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Bye. I'm actually surprised, Larry, that you wouldn't re- like. You have a great memory because you, you've texted me a few times. <laughs> You have a great memory for kind of what happened in your career. I'm surprised you don't remember that, but yeah. Um, hey, uh, what's your favorite? What's your favorite European Supercross off-season win? Who I'm the most proud of. I mean, of course, B- Bercy is yep. cool, and that's kind of the most limelight one. And I was very lucky. I mean, I won there at the end of '89, uh, first like first race on a Suzuki. Ricky Johnson, Jeff Lee. I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it was unbelievable that I won. But so, being taller, the smaller, tighter, more technical tracks I've learned through the years is definitely an advantage, and that was my my strong point. Uh, wide open, fast outdoor tracks. Obviously, uh, you know, Ricky Stature, Jeff yeah. Ward definitely favors that. Um, but I think the one that I would have to say I'm the most proud of that was unbelievable. Um, was the Saparidi fast cross? Oh yeah, yeah. I, uh, R- Ricky, J- they, they, I, I won. I won the first year. I won the separate. So, and I have to give credit to Honda Troy on this one because the track was greasy and slippery, mm-hmm. and H- H- Honda Power. I mean, in in ninety six, ninety seven, the motors were so torqued. They were good, yeah. So good. I, I, I mean, stock pipe, whatever. They were they were great. Um, and so I won it the first year. And then the second year, I won it again. And, I mean, and there's a lot of guys. Jeremy, there, there's a lot of good guys. Um, and then I won it. So when I went to get the trophy, there was this really cool glass-blown motorcycle trophy. And the, the owners of Saparitis, they love Jeremy, which, you know, everybody in Europe yeah, loves Jeremy. Right. And the trophy was for Jeremy. <laughs> and so <laughs> the trophy, and I won. So they don't the trophy disappears and that night at, at dinner i'm like hey where was that trophy and they're like oh blah 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 and made up the story and so then the next year we show up at the race and it's the first so they loved ricky johnson as well yeah and the right. trophy was back but it was for the first person to win the race three times because no one had ever even won oh, it okay twice, yeah, yeah, yeah but ricky won it three times so i proceeded to win it that next year again on 100 troy 98 um Leroy and I went there and won it for the third time, and yeah. I got the trophy, and I'm looking at it in my office nice, right now. It's nice. And then, uh, then the fourth year, um, on Suzuki again, 99 with Leroy, 
we led if it was a 15 lap or if it was yeah. a 20 lap race we led 19 of the 20 laps it started raining the last three or four laps and uh i'm not embarrassed to say stefan evers passed me and i finished second oh, so yeah, yeah. i was pretty for whatever reason it was a john savitsky uh track yeah. built supercross tracks in the early 90s mm-hmm. and i did cheat a little on the start but no one ever caught me <laughs> um so i got good starts yeah <laughs> And uh, no one ever cut off for four years, so it's kind of like <laughs> high school. If I was smart enough to cheat and get away with it, yeah. I'm good. Uh, all right, we got a TJ's on line five. TJ, you got a Larry Ward story? Yeah, hey, Larry, I just want to say uh, you were a childhood hero, man, about age eight. Uh, I got to meet you at the 1995 Dallas Supercross. You gave me your Oakley goggles after the race. You signed them. I was so stoked. Nice. I went went to a race uh, about a week later, and I had those goggles in the truck, and I think I blew mine out or something like that, and I raced uh, four motos that day with Larry Ward signed across my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> Jeez, dude. So, wow. Man, I'm so glad you're back, so glad to hear your voice, and uh, I hope to see you around. Yeah, there you go, Larry. Well, 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 thank you. Funny story about that is sometimes, uh, you know, just messing with people, we'd, we'd put, you know, black Sharpie marks on, on uh on their goggles, but we put it on the first tear off. So as soon as they pulled one tear off, I was gone. So yeah, good, good for you. <laughs> nice, nice. I like that. Uh, we got Nash on three. Nash, what's going on, gentlemen? This is like unicorn hunting. Larry, Larry Ward. Ward's on the show. <laughs> nobody can believe it. It might nobody. <laughs> it, yeah, it, you made my night, Larry. Thanks for coming on, and and you're super animated. You're you've got to do a long form <laughs> podcast, please. Wow. I mean, whatever Steve's got to do to land that plane. <laughs> He's got to make it happen. Yeah, so, Tampa, well, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Sincerely, for real. Uh, all right, so you got to slice through two two areas of Pulp MX folklore. Steve Berluti and many others on the show would often reference your setup and say that you would have to take stock forks, you would, you would make your mechanical crazy. <laughs> Is there truth to this? Settle it right oh, now, I, please. I, 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 abs- absolutely. Um, you know, yeah. I was very picky. So, so we ride... We ride all week long on a practice bike, and the grips are literally worn into your hand. Uh, mm-hmm. the suspension, especially in the early 90s, suspension is clapped out. Um, <laughs> and then you, and your muffler's, uh, you know, insulation blown out of your muffler. And then mm-hmm. you get this brand-new, awesome bike that everybody wants to ride, and it feels like a gigantic piece of crap. <laughs> so, <laughs> sure. So, totally yeah, I, was, I was a little bit picky, but um, – you know, I weeded out the – it's hard. You can't just, like I said, you can't go to a race and just expect to do good every weekend. You have to – You have to, it's mm-hmm. nonstop. We are lucky. Our sport is one where the rider can mm-hmm. definitely overcome the odds. It's one of the few racing motor or tired sports mm-hmm. that's like that. Um, mm-hmm. But you, you still have to be somewhat comfortable. We still are, you know, risking our lives out there, and you have to be somewhat comfortable. And whenever I was picky about my handlebar position or my uh, – and also you got to remember in the early 90s, you might get three sets of handlebars with the same number, and they were all different. It's not like it, wow. it is now. It's Par- yeah. Parabino's quality control is dialed up quite a bit, would you say? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, I love it. So, uh, hey, last – Last thing, any daughter stories. As a young uh, well, one, ones, that, ones that can be told over the air. Ones that can be told over the air, of course. Surely you got some daughter stories. <laughs> I'm sorry, me? Yeah, you, you, Larry. What, what's this question? Do you have, what, what are some of your favorite daughter stories that we can share on the air? <laughs> well, the day mine was born. No, uh, dogger, wrong machine. Oh, dogger. 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, you know, he was he was a little bit before my time, but I still do keep in contact with him. Um, uh, not, not a lot, but but enough. And uh, I still use Maxima oil here at the at the shop, and mm-hmm. I use them on my RC cars. Um, uh, so for me, Dogger, when I was Dogger and Jeff Ward, I was a Team Green kid growing up, mm-hmm. and they they were it. I mean, Dogger had the coolest style, the coolest gear. Um, and Jeff Ward had the same last name as me, um, and and I I, lo- I love I just I like everything about him. I, I don't I don't have any too you know of course nope. I've heard all the stories and stuff, but I, I never I never saw that you know, side of dog. You, you know, know I have drank I have drank a beer with him, and and uh, he mm-hmm. always kept it under control with me, and he, he's been cool to me. Now now Wardy, uh, I, I think I've told this story a little bit, but like I said, like my mom knitted him a hat when I was a little sixty rider, oh an eighty rider. I have two of his jerseys right here in my office. Uh, wow. but then in, and I told him the story this weekend. We got a pretty good laugh out of it. Out of it, but 
Then in 90, Chicken and me had our big feuds. Yeah. And he mm-hmm. was Chicken's teammate. So then he started ganging up and, and being mean to me, which was a great teammate. But uh, yeah. but then I wasn't such a Jeff Ward fan <laughs> anymore. Uh, but time heals everything. I saw him this weekend, and it was great to see him. He looks like he's doing pretty good again. So. You, know, you know what's funny? Well, you know what's funny about Dogger, uh, Larry, is like he so he broke his femur in 89, right? You're, you're a 125 guy. Like, yeah. in the mid-90s, he's still racing in Europe. I'm sure you ran into mm-hmm. him when you were, like, Honda or Troy, and you're like, mm-hmm. Lach- Lachine is here again. Here he is. So I'm sure you ran I, into him, Larry. I, yeah, and I even, believe it or not, had the, you know, looking back on it now, I've even raced with Brock Glover in Europe, which is, right. you know, wow. pretty gnarly. Those guys were, you know, child childhood heroes of yeah. mine. And uh, I think Brock was, like, on a Kajiva or something, and uh, <laughs> he, he – all I can say is he definitely wasn't competitive, but, <laughs> uh, but, mm-hmm. but, but yeah, I think, I think there's a trading card with, uh, uh, Ronnie and I on the same trading card in the, in the, in the early nineties. So yeah. he, he just, he just really, I, I don't know, just super, yeah. super good guy. He's, uh, he's really easy to be around, fun to be around. He, he's just, you, you want to hang out with him. He's just a um, cool guy. He, Thanks, He's Nash. An icon. Hey, hey, Steve, you got to land this plane. You got to get a long form with this guy. No listen, I, I, I been, listen, Nash. Don't listen to Larry. I've been trying. Don't, don't listen to him say this was my first time because there's Larry. The people have spoken. The they're, people they're, have they're spoken. Begging for it. I agree. Cheers, guys. Have a Thanks, great show. Nash. Cheers. Thank you, Nash. Uh, Stonewood Ranch on Instagram. The Stonewood Ranch on Facebook. Before we let you go, Larry, we got to get to the bottom of this. Jason Thomas. You're online with Larry Ward. So, Larry's saying he did not say Justin Thomas to you. He called you Jason. I'm good with that. That's, uh, I, I would much prefer that, but I'm, honestly, I'm good either way. <laughs> and, and I and, and uh, I hope you know that if I did, I'm I, I, I just got there. I'm trying to get passes. Um, <laughs> and, and I did make joke out of it, though. I did send Mathis pictures of Justin Thomas golf, leading the uh, PGA like Tour golf, on yeah. Sunday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll trade spots with him many times. That's no problem. Yeah. I'll be, and then and then I did Thomas say, uh, you know, I did say also that. So obviously we I've grown after after racing and I and I joked around I said hey you know he just looks smaller than I remember and I thought it was just a little bit of Justin. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, Larry. Well, hey, thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Uh, really fun to talk to you and catch up. And please check out the Stonewood Ranch on Facebook, Stonewood Ranch on Instagram, everybody. And, and maybe there's some maybe there's some place to to hit up there. And I'll 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 send that asshole RV's number over to you. I, I really appreciate it. I've had a blast. Uh, you're definitely making brownie points for, okay. for a long form. But okay. That's fine. Thanks. Thanks once again. It's very humbling to to to, to read all these comments and and realize that that I'm remembered. It, it makes you feel really good when you get a little bit older. So thank you guys cool. very much. All right, Larry. Thanks, man. Talk to you soon. Good night. All right. That's Larry. Whatever. Brought to you by Skosh. Uh, Pulp 2020 is the code to save. Great interview, right? Yeah, yeah he's he's, he's great. Uh, animated and obviously passionate about what he's doing now. So yeah. that's cool. Yeah. It's cool. He's he's. Uh, he he was a little.